Hey TV fans, Board Nail back with you on this video. I'm going to be talking about them, The Scare, Episode 3, and the episode is called The Man with the Red Hair. So full spoilers from the start of this review, as always. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel if you are new, and... Yeah, I'm going to get into it. This is a pretty solid and tight episode. And what I liked about it is where the title of the episode comes from and where it leads. It, it does take you into some unexpected places. And I sort of like how it connects the two sides of the plot and how there's like kind of um, parallels between what the man with the red hair actually means because that is an appearance which Edmund puts on when he's trying to be the scary horror character and I'll get into his part of the plot in a minute but this episode definitely shows his psychology, his breakdown and how he is becoming more and more living his his character or his potential character as he goes for this role and is just enjoying in, in kind of freaking people out and, and becoming like a full-blown almost like perverse attraction type thing but how he's just taking that too far and a, a lot of the, the isolation of the character and what that leads to in this episode but I, as I said I do like how the title Almost has double meanings, maybe triple meanings, because there's a nice payoff to what, well, the man with the red hair means by the end. So, picking up with Dawn at work, there's a clever subversion in the first part of the episode where she she drives into work and this cop is being really douchey with her, like he, he won't move so she can get into a parking space he's blocking the parking space on purpose and he's aggressive back when she says please can you move and he makes a comment under his breath when he drives away and your initial reaction is then well he's, he's just being racist and he's just making life harder for her and you could maybe still read it like that but once she gets into the office and they've pinned up a copy of the article which has gone out and it's this article which paints the police department in a very bad light when it comes to how they've dealt with the african-american communities how they've abandoned them and ignored them so so very critical once again on the back of the whole rodney king thing and the people at work are blaming dawn they believe that she gave the information to the press to this journalist and we see Ronald her former partner as it is kind of eyeing her up staring her down and that becomes a big part of the episode his involvement in the scenes but she's called in to see Newman as I guess I always call him the chief of police and he's fuming because he's convinced Dawn did leak this to the press and she denies it, which I'm pretty sure if you go back to the last episode is true. I think she was approached by a journalist, but she never confirmed anything. She didn't give a story at that point because she wanted something more concrete. And she was also worried about the repercussions at work if she did speak out, especially without like merit. But Newman <laughs> is grilling her a lot. And she expects to be taken off the task force, but he, she isn't. And he says partly because you have to face the music now. You've given us a bad name. But she's she also needs a new partner because apparently Ronald isn't her partner anymore after the incident in the last episode. And we saw how Ronald was the aggressor and how, again, he's a very traditional, masculine, very racist, at least casual racist type character. So Dawn <clears throat> talks to Joaquin, 
who's a young up-and-coming cop. He's also African-American, although not, not full-blown African-American, but he is. He has that sort of heritage. And as an up-and-comer who is yet to get his big break, he is keen to work with Dawn. So he he does agree. But she warns him, you know, this is a high-pressure case. You, you're going to get a lot of heat. And he's ready to go. He's willing to go. And they discuss what this guy could be based on some of the descriptions when she finds out later on in the episode about the red hair link the guy with the red hair which is reported then he he starts looking into that he starts looking into people seeing white people with red hair going into black neighbourhoods so that becomes a thread and things really come to a head when she, Dawn gets a call from this this young guy who was a witness pretty much to the murder of the two girls from the past because he knew them they were best friends of his lived in the neighbourhood and he says he just Kind of, you know, he didn't really expect anything to happen to them. And he has regrets over maybe his part than maybe he could have done a bit more. So he calls Dawn into, like, this very isolated mannequin shop, which is owned by his parents. And I do like the mood and the direction of this episode because there's a lot of suggestion, even in scenes which... Nothing really happens when it comes to anything sinister or like a supernatural element. There's just a certain mood and the way scenes are lit. Like in this mannequin shop, it looks very sort of spare and dead. So it gives off a certain vibe and a certain mystery. But there's a little bit of politics here because his parents are immigrants. And that's why the kid is hesitant to really say anything and bring too much attention because they're worried about the police involvement and once again we see how it's another example of how the police at this point are not trusted by minorities and and how dawn who is one of one of the good cops who is on the people's side has to work extra to gain trust and the parents don't want anything to do with her so tells her to leave but then i think his name was jason the son he talks to her in private he takes her up to the girl's room and describes what happened on that night he plays a video of them like dancing in the room innocently and it cuts to various things and at one point they start talking about how a guy was following them around all the time and we see a shot of them looking out the window and one of them saying he's staring right at us and it's in the video where they describe him as the man with the red hair now i should also say at this point then those creepy dolls we've also seen have red hair so you're getting three different examples almost here but we see them make an appearance and they've been used by Edmund at some point in the show. So again, a little bit of a link there, but they get delivered to the toy store at some point, the one run by Pam Greer's character, the mother of Dawn. So this tips her off then, okay, it's a guy with red hair. And again, there's that weird sort of, question of of how can like a white person especially dressed with that with like red hair how can he just wander into an african-american neighborhood after dark and her and Joaquin start to speculate then maybe it's someone who's like a service person or on a job like someone like a postman but then Dawn makes the connection then it could be a policeman like they would probably have access and people would be too intimidated to like really touch them and that's when she starts to 
put things together and starts to question things and you see her cut around the office looking at various people so whacking i don't think is as convinced and it's a police person but dawn seems pretty convinced but she's gonna try and get evidence first of all and the big moment in the episode when it comes to a light bulb switching for her is then she catches her son taking pot because we see a little bit of in in this episode we see that he's missing his father and he's a bit isolated and has turned to pot and Ronald who continues to be aggressive and and quite threatening there's a very intimidating scene when he approaches Dawn in the office and he's drunken because it's kind of he's been for drinks after work and he's just kind of passive aggressive you're not quite sure where he's coming from but he's he's doing that intimidation thing without outright making any threats because at one point he he apologizes for not being the most helpful partner for not wanting to like communicate better and says can we start our relationship again can we put it on on the reset button i wondered at one point if he was kind of hitting on her maybe because i just got that little vibe but i think in the end he wasn't and he does make an indirect threat towards her son mentions about how hey what's your son doing tonight is he home alone and just implies is is that a good idea for that and and that's when dawn kind of gets him to back off but then the next day when we follow the son it's ronald who picks him up and mentions and he works with the mum and catches him with the drugs so he kind of uses that as leverage and gives him a ride home and he does try to appeal to him because he says, I, I know what you're going through. I can relate a bit because my dad like abuses me or abused me and wasn't the best dad. But he's just making suggestions all the time. And then he drops, her, drops him off and says hi to your mum. Now that's as far as it goes. But then later on after dawn has taken cal for lunch he tells her about seeing like ronald mcdonald (laughs) wandering about the neighborhood during the day and at this point she connects the dots and is thinking of ronald as in the cop and just how aggressive he's been towards her and what he's been suggesting and making an indirect threat to towards the son could also say that hey yeah this guy is the killer but i love how it leaves it open like i love how it connects these things and you can definitely see this pattern with ronald where he could be the killer because he fits the profile of what she's thinking he is a police officer he does seem to have an agenda towards the african-american community she's seen him blatantly beat up a black guy in the previous episode for almost nothing and he's like overstepped his mark so it's cutting around these things and making these connections which is really well done but it's also doing a good job of like leaving stuff open and posing more questions because again you know the idea was that this was just a guy who who had red hair like so again what sort of guy are we talking about is is he actually dressed as ronald mcdonald is it a guy with red hair or is it just someone called ronald which would lead to think it could be the cop ronald but i I do like the way it, it crosses dawn's mind and it could be ronald and i'm gonna guess maybe not just because it's only episode three and i'm sort of thinking maybe things will come to the head come to a head a bit later but who knows i mean maybe it'll be him but it's just going to take her a lot of like digging and fighting to actually be able to pin it on him and get him arrested but 
We'll see. I, I just at this point I'm thinking maybe it's not him, but again, all these connections, all this suspense. And as I said, there's sort of a link with the Edmund plot because he is really starting to live this character now that he's auditioning for the horror movie. And he has dinner with Rhonda at one point. She comes around, so I guess this is a date, or it could just be then she's being friendly with him. But things still soon turn sinister because she, when he's in the bathroom, she starts looking at like his blockbuster <laughs> rentals. And again, he comes out of the dark, so it's a really well shot horror episode the, the the mood of it because he's just lurking there in the background and he's actually put like this hood on like the sort of see-through hood and mask you, you can get and it's all very sinister like he's living and breathing like almost the role of a serial killer and he comes out of nowhere and he just threatens her with a knife and and she pleads with him i've got kids and and he, he he's just in a world of his own. Like he believes that she's playing a part, then she's like rehearsing a scene with him, even though she knew nothing about this. And she makes an excuse and and then leaves. And things escalate when he goes to the rehearsal later in the episode. Before that, we see him watching TV, and it's Charles Manson being interviewed. So once again. All this is playing into his mindset and almost building him up as like, yeah, he could be this this fray. He could this could be him mirroring someone like Manson, but he's almost looking up to that kind of character. But once again, there's the racial element here because one of the reasons why he wanted to take the role as a serial killer or a slasher villain is because you don't normally at this point see African-American slasher villains. So again, he's almost taking this idea of celebrity one step too far in what he actually wants to be. So when he goes to the rehearsal, he shows up in the mask and his own outfit. And again, he gets people at the rehearsal scared. He's told to leave and he, he bursts into the office. And it turns out Rhonda has quite rightly told the co-workers because she knows Ronald is going to come in to, for the audition. And again, it's a very intimidating scene. And I think the guy playing... Not Ronald, sorry, but Edmund is fantastic because he definitely has this mix of being a very awkward, nerdy type character, but also having this really uneasy feel to him where, yeah, you sort of can believe that he, he could be very dangerous and, and out there as well. So I think they've cast that character really well. And... The nice touch at the end of this scene is that he's getting all frantic and aggressive and they're telling him to leave. leave, And he just goes up to Rhonda all threatening and, and he actually screams, you told me I was good for the part or something like that. You told me you were made for the part. It's something like that. But what I love about it is it, it almost becomes like a line in the slasher movie, like a one-liner, which a killer might say. So he is living and breathing this stuff, and eventually they force him to leave. But again, he's lurking later on, and he's in his car watching Rhonda as she leaves later on with, like, a co-worker. So the threat is not gone, and I guess this stuff puts him in, in the frame for, like, he could be the killer... Because he also had the dolls. And another little touch I quite like is then I think the hood he started using is the hood that he he used when he was considering killing himself and appeared to be thinking about that. So I quite like this idea then he got the idea to use that as part of his costume. That's really cool. But yeah, he's really scary. And once again, that stuff is effective. So yeah, that's Lem, episode three, Lem the Scared. 
all the scare pretty good episode once again some interesting stuff and and some good development with with the murder investigation as well so let me know your thoughts in the comments below like and subscribe as always share me out on social media you can also support the channel for a little extra a month at patreon.com slash board now just a dollar a month for some extra perks like commentaries, early access to reviews, unpopular opinion videos, which I'm going to start soon. And also you can make a one-off donation on my PayPal account, which is on the channel if you want to support the channel that way. But thanks for listening, guys. I'll be back with more of this soon. See you later.